All over the world, animals have adapted to some of the most extreme conditions our planet has to offer. You wouldn't think that anything could survive in the frigid depths of the ocean or amidst the radioactivity of nuclear fallout, but life always seems to find a way. Sometimes it feels like our species is so obsessed with looking out into space for strange new life forms that we rarely stop to look at the marvels living right here on Earth. We might say that certain planets are uninhabitable because of their extreme conditions, but we have plenty of organisms that prove life can adapt to just about anything. And the more questions we ask about how they do it, the more we can learn about overcoming extreme conditions of our own. How do some animals survive without ever drinking water? What's life like living on underwater volcanoes? And how can one species survive being blasted into space? When it comes to survival, human beings can be pretty needy. If we're deprived of drinking water for three or four days, we're dead. But some animals are a little more versatile. Take the kangaroo rat, for example. It can survive its entire life without drinking water. These bipedal rodents live in the dry heat of the desert. Because water is so hard for them to come by, they've adopted several strategies to exploit what's available. They get all the moisture they need from their seed diet, and they hold on to it by minimizing their sweating, panting, breathing, urinating, and pooping. If you think the desert is a hot place to survive, wait until you see where we're going next. Usually, the bottom of the sea is associated with frigid temperatures. But if you happen to live right beside a hydrothermal vent, then it's the complete opposite. These vents are cracks in the sea floor that blast out superheated water at more than 400 degrees Celsius. And right beside these red-hot geysers are creatures called Pompeii worms, who make their homes on these chimney-like columns. Scientists have named them the most heat-tolerant animal on the planet, but they haven't figured out why. The current theory is that they must be insulated by the symbiotic bacteria that coats their skin. But with the difficulty of getting these worms to the surface, it may still be a while before we know for sure. While we're on the topic of tidal holding animals in the ocean, let's move on to the coldest dwelling shark in the world, the Greenland shark. This giant shark lives in water temperatures about 1 to 12 degrees Celsius. In order to survive the cold, it moves incredibly slowly to conserve energy and it's adapted to eat pretty well anything that comes its way, even if that means scavenging dead animals. Ugh. But enough with all the animals of the deep, let's check out one of the highest creatures on Earth. Uh, not like that. If you go way up into the Himalayas, 6,700 meters to be exact, you'd run into the Himalayan jumping spider. Oddly enough, these guys aren't very different from the jumping spiders who live at ground level. They just have to be a little more resourceful. To protect themselves from the cold temperatures, they spin silken cells beneath the rocks. And because they don't have many neighbors up there, they rely on small insects blown up by the wind as their primary source of food. All the obstacles we've talked about up to this point will seem like nothing when you see what this last creature can survive. Possibly the most extreme living things on the planet, tardigrades, are microscopic organisms that can withstand being boiled, crushed, and blasted into space. These creatures survive extreme conditions by going into a dehydrated state where they can last for decades. All you need to do to revive them completely is place them in some water and then bring them up to speed on what they've missed over the years. While it may be hard to get to some of these animals, it might be worthwhile to study them. Their bizarre adaptations could lead to the possibility of life beyond Earth. And that's why they're crazy creatures.